he's going to have the Broncos first down as he gets this up past the 30. And that's how you get started and open up a game. Really well blocked play. Picked up a nice chunk of yardage. If you're the offensive line, that's exactly what you've talked about all week long in your meetings. Establish the line of scrimmage and take control. And they gave their running back plenty of room to rumble. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Wilson. Eluding the pressure right. This one complete to Jerry Judy. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. Come on, guys. Do it. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. He'll get this one to Patrick. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a lightning fast decision that time. He just caught it and got rid of it. Because he saw his guy was going to be open immediately. So he took the R, the run, out of the play. He took the O, the option, out of the play and immediately got to the pass. Now Wilson on first down. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Denver has the first down, the play going for 15 yards. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Someone's looking fresh, and this old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. Now it's Wilson. That's complete. It's Greg Dosich. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Call that a very strong gain of 24. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Javante Williams. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos are on the board first here this afternoon. Well, just about an ideal start to this one offensively because on the road, you want to make sure you quiet the home crowd early. And how do they do it? Nice march to start things off, let the run game find its footing early. That drive certainly checked a lot of boxes, and they finished it off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 18. Throw left side and Osborne has it. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. He'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. First carry for the Boise State Bronco, Alexander Madison. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. 
On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began, thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. In motion goes Patrick. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. If points result, we'll call this play significant. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. And he's going to be ridden out of bounds down inside the 25. A huge play there for Denver, 42 yards. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as designed because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on the wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this ball's right on the money and leads to a big play. Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two, as they are looking at a second and five situation. Throwing again here, Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. Touchdown, Broncos! Javante Williams. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Broncos have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles. A great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Nuwangu now from his end zone. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Play action. Now Wilson. They'll roll him out right. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Okay, was it a breakdown of protection? Did the running back not pick him up? 
What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. It's third and long now for Wilson and the Broncos after that sack. Looking to throw. Wilson. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And now from the complete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion as we just saw there, that's winning football. The kick by Lutz is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. Nwangu now from his end zone. And he's going to be out of bounds on the return. Not a great return. They'll start back around the 17. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. Want to. We know, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. A first down throw for Cousins. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play there for Minnesota. 41 yards. Uh, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, that shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. Off the play fake, Cousins. There's Hawkinson in the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings get a bit closer. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. On the return, here comes Smith out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. From the shotgun, Wilson. That's caught. It's Marvin Mims. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. All right, right for one, and that's going to be intercepted. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. 
Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. Meanwhile, Cousins' throw taken in by Hawkinson here. Cousins trying to get his guys up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Second and three. That's down the field for Jefferson. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Now Cousins. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. Too long for a field goal, too short to punt that in between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. To throw is Cousins. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Cousins, and a throw here caught by Addison. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Cousins again. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. On third down, Cousins. Oh, that's in a double coverage and intercepted. Picked off by Josie Jewell. And the Broncos are going to take over at their own 41. And that felt like a little extra pressure on that third down attempt and their mistake cost them points because they're inside the red zone. So you know you've got at least a field goal waiting for you. And in this case, they end up with nothing. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And with decent starting field position, there may be only a couple completions away from field goal range. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Second and 10 now, Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. And smartly going into the slide there. Wilson has enough for the first. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. And now we'll get a late timeout. As it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL. And it's a presentation of EA Sports. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. 
This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A big play there for Minnesota. And even 50 yards. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Cousins now. And the Broncos get there and take him down. It looks like a 12-yard loss there on the first down sack. So a nice bounce back there defensively after giving up the big play. Yeah, you can either get down on yourself or you can get motivated. And that time, they dropped him for a loss. So I would say that they got motivated and made the play. Now this throw caught left side. And this is going to be another first down as they make the tackle at the Broncos' 20-yard line. And the offense moving quickly to the line. From the red zone now, Cousins. Back in the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing, you already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long, and this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Madison going to be stopped before he can get moving forward as he'll lose a couple back to the five-yard line. They go play action. Cousins. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. We just saw another example of really good defensive football, which has led to the cushion that they have in this game. Got to him once again, knocked him on the ground, forced an incompletion. Yeah, they've set the tone. It's one thing to set the tone, another to come in here on the road and set the tone. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. Joseph's got it. And that cuts into the deficit. It's now 20 to 10. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Joseph now to kick this one away. Out of the end zone comes Smith. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Denver offense at the line ready to go. This quick pass complete to Sutton. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. All right, partner, I wasn't good enough to get this done, but I played with plenty of guys who did. When they spotted wide receiver screen and they got to the football fast and blew the whole thing up, the same result as we just saw usually happened. No gain. On second down, here's Wilson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they're going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know, that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. 
Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is down to a field goal. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. On the return, here comes Smith out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. They'll be looking to make amends for the events of a moment ago. A fumble return for six points. You absolutely have to protect the football. That's got to be priority number one because margin for error is starting to slip away. Now it's down to a one-score game. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a thump with him, doesn't he? He does. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. He may go, and he will step out of bounds down near the 10-yard line. 108 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. So you got the lead here in the second half. Obviously, you love big runs like that at any time. Here, you really like it. And how about the confidence that's being exhibited by that offense now? They don't care what you're lining up doing on the defensive side. They want the big fall to carry the football and carry it off. Him. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. Here's second and goal operating from the eight-yard line. Again, it's Williams. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Wilson gets rid of it quickly. Touchdown! Tim Patrick from six yards away. And the Broncos are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. No lead safe in the new NFL, but this score is really going to give them some needed breathing room. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But I also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Now Cousins. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Moving inside the 20. Touchdown, Vikings. Alexander Madison, 83 yards. And the Vikings are able to get a score back in the final stages of this third quarter. 
Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here, he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Joseph now to kick this one away. Out of the end zone comes Smith. They had tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. Here's Wilson. Short throw caught by Dulcich. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. 118 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they turn to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Give him 32 on the play. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try to loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. They go back to the ground with Williams. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Wilson. The kick by Lutz is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because they know they're more motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. 
Meanwhile, Cousins throw pulled in by Jefferson. Here comes second down and five. Play action now, Cousins. He lets one go deep for Addison. And he's got it inside the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. Jordan Addison, 62 yards. And the Vikings are an extra point away from going back on top here in the fourth. Joseph on for the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This taken in at the goal line. Down the numbers. There he goes. Tremont Smith. And oh, out of bounds at the one-yard line. What a return. He did everything but take it to the house. And, partner, not only is he kicking himself right now, He's going to petition the league for 99-yard fields. That's almost not fair to get it that far and not get into the end zone. Nevertheless, a great return. They'll run. Here's Burton, the fullback. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Mike Burton taking it in from a yard out. And the Broncos answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth-quarter lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll look to run for it with Williams. And he is not going to make it. So they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game. After the touchdown, wants to kick it off. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. First down, here's Cousins. Throw left side, and Osborne has it. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. K.J. Osborne, 75 yards. And the Vikings use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. So now an extra point doesn't help much. They'll try to go for two to make the difference a field goal, and they can lead it by three. Here's Cousins. And no, incomplete. They can't convert. So they tried to bump the lead up to a field goal. Instead, it stays at one here in the fourth. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive.
He'll start this drive out on the ground. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Not a position where they absolutely have to rush right now, but they definitely have to pick up the tempo a bit. Here's second down. There's Wilson. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Now that is the two-minute drill at its very best. Get the completion, get a big chunk of yardage, and then get out of bounds to save those timeouts. You cannot do it any better than that. On oh, the option to give to Williams here. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing now is Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll get this down only to the 18. I know they get a little yardage there, but I'm not sure their investment is right. They're still running the football, and I'm not sure there's enough time to continue to do that. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. They'll come up now, second and nine. He'll get this one to Patrick. Sometimes it's hard to figure, but you can live with incompletions in this situation. You can't live with these short gains and take time off the clock. You know who loves it, this defense. And we are set for a great finish as that timeout comes in with two seconds to go in this football game. So it all rests now on the right leg of Will Lutz. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. Two seconds on the clock. This for the win. And it is good. He splits the uprights on the chip shot. And it'll be all smiles on Blake Street tonight. The Broncos have won it. What a finish in this one, Charles. You know, this group, they come in, they have to fight a hostile atmosphere every snap. They get the late score, they get the victory, and that flight home, it's going to be a little sweeter after this one. And Brandon, just like you, I was fired up for that last sequence. How about that? Wouldn't you have loved to have been in the huddle when they were mounting that game-winning drive? Big-time moment. No one shied away from it. They tuned out the crowd, kept their heads, and executed the way they needed to to earn that win. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the